In this video, we'll be looking at analyzing a mixing tank in Simulia XFlow. This is a follow-on to a previous tutorial we did of performing a mixing tank analysis in SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation, and we'll talk about some of the more advanced effects we're able to incorporate in XFlow here shortly. Simulia XFlow is a standalone CFD package based on Lattice Boltzmann Solver method, which specializes in problems that involve a lot of body movement or free surface interactions. So for mixing tank problems, the ability to solve for a free surface or the airspace at the top of the tank in a robust way is a definite advantage. It also has the ability to utilize scalar transports, which is a method to define additional species within the flow. There's passive scalars, which don't affect the flow, which could represent things like dye or colorant, and active scalars, which can incorporate density and buoyancy effects. There's also the discrete particle method, which allows for particle injection on either a steady state or a transient basis. One of its biggest strengths is its technology around body motion. It supports arbitrary movement, so we can do things like vertical mixers, and we don't have to specify any rotating regions or arbitrary reference frames. So for problems like the stirs you see on the left where they're overlapping agitators, that's supported as well. So for this tutorial, it's gonna be a step-by-step -step tutorial, and I thought I'd outline some of the goals here. We're going to have a rotating agitator that we're going to spin at 60 RPM. We're going to fill this tank partially with water, uh, 0.3 meters from the top, and we'll add some dye or colorant to the bottom of the tank using that passive scaler from 0.8 meters down. And later on, we'll mix some solid particles into the flow. Before we jump into XFlow, I just wanted to point out if my user interface looks different than yours, it's because I've gone into my options, preferences, and under application, set my application style to dark and my application mode to labs, which enables some additional options. Let's go ahead and get started with our setup. When you open Simulia XFlow, you'll get the screen to choose from a project template. So we're going to choose internal free surface. And the next thing we'll do is import our geometry. So we'll go to geometry and import a geometry. This can be a step file or a SOLIDWORKS file. In this case, I'm going to import this mixer.step. Just want to make sure we pull it in as multiple different shapes and click OK. And let's adjust the visual appearance of the tank. So I'll select it, right click and set visualization material. I'm going to make it just a plain white color and lower its opacity. On my geometry tab, I'll rename the imported bodies to my agitator and my tank. The agitator, I'm actually going to lower down slightly. So for its position on the Y, I'm going to set that to negative 0.1. And we'll control its rotation by setting the behavior of the agitator to enforced. So there's no rotating regions here. We don't need to size a region around the body we can just directly control its movement. So under its angular laws for the Y direction, I can pop open the function editor, and I'm gonna have this spin at just 60 RPM. So we'll do 360 degrees times T. You can see how our rotational position changes versus time. As soon as we do that, we can scrub through our timeline and see the agitator rotating. The other bodies will leave as fixed. So now I'll go to my simulation tab and I want to extend the solution time to four seconds or four revolutions. While I'm here, I'll lower my frames frequency to just 60 frames a second. This will be the frequency with which we save our cut plots and such, whereas our numerical data like torque will be saved at the faster solver time step which I'm going to specify myself as a custom time step of two thousandths of a second. I'll also specify to save the resume file in case we want to stop and then restart the analysis. Now, back to our environment tab, I want to specify the initial level of the liquid. So right here under my initial liquid function, I could initialize it to a body, or I can just type in something like y less than negative 0.3. So that will give me anywhere below 0.3 meters below the 
zero here is going to be filled with our default liquid, which is water. Now to represent the effects of that colorant that we're going to add to the bottom of the tank, I'll enable the scalar transport, right click and add a scalar. Then we'll initialize its concentration to be under y less than negative 0.8. And that should be about all we need to adjust. Under my materials tab, you can see the default properties here for water. Our geometry tab, we've already defined the rotation. And the simulation tab, we've set our simulation time and time step. The other thing we need to look at is our resolved scale. So, Simulia XLO uses lattice Boltzmann method, which uses a lattice structure to resolve the domain. So instead of a mesh size, we have a resolved scale here, which will change to 0.04 for our global scale. And we'll also enable the adaptive refinement algorithm. So this will put refinement dynamically where it's needed during the analysis. I'm gonna leave the agitator and tank bodies at the default 0.04, but my interface wake re resolution I'll lower to 0.02. And we'll see what this does as we solve the analysis. Now we should be ready to run. So I'll go ahead and start the analysis. First, it's going to prompt us to save. So I'll save my project. Then it will begin generating the initial lattice structure and solving the analysis. And every frame of results, depending on our frame frequency, will get an update on the screen. We should also have a solver monitor here where we can see it's estimating about 10 minutes to solve. This is with the default 8-core license solving on a desktop CPU. And while it's solving, we can begin our post-processing. One thing I'll want to look at is to insert an ISO surface. So I'll right-click on my ISO surfaces and add an ISO surface, which I'll set to VOF, or volume of fluid. Set the value to 0.5, and then click the little arrows here to refresh it. This will give me a preview of the water line in the tank as it develops. Next, I'll add a cutting plane. And the cutting plane is defaulting to my Z direction, which is currently set to velocity. I can turn on my interpolation mode to convolution to see it in a smooth form. And we can go back and forth through our results at any point here. Now to begin monitoring engineering values like the torque required, I can pull up the function viewer, which I'll dock on the top of my screen, and then right click to choose what I want to plot. So under shapes, I'll choose the agitator and then plot the moment in the Y direction to find my torque over time. Finally, we can visualize the mixing of that scalar transport that we define by adding an additional cutting plane, and this time I'll switch the visualization field to scalar 1. Now if we rewind in time, we can see that initially that was set at the height we specified, and we can see how it will mix into the main liquid as the solution progresses. We can also examine our mesh or our lattice structure if we want to add an additional cutting plane. Switch the visualization mode to domain structure. We can see that XLO, using the adaptive refinement method, updates the lattice structure on every individual frame or solver time step, placing refinement where it needs to be to track the free surface of the liquid as well as the motion of any of our moving components. Let's check back in once the results are complete. Okay, now that our solution is complete, we can see that eventually we reach a quite a steady state by the end. We can auto fit our display here or maybe zoom in towards the end to see our torque values at the end of the solution. To get engineering data out of XFlow, there's several ways to do that. But one way would be to export our numerical data 
So this is where we could take things like the information on those shapes and export them to a text file, which could be brought into Excel. We can also create animations by using the animation wizard. I'll set my frame rate to 60 frames a second, so we get a one-to-one -one time scale. Name my video and click create animation. Inside our project directory, we can find the animated output. If we also want to take a look at some particle injection, I'll need a source for that. So something I can do is create geometry that's just used for post-processing. So if I go to my geometry tab and go to create an object like a cylinder, let's make it pretty small. I'll make the radius 0.1 and the height 0.1. I'll make it pointing up in the Y direction. And let's say I want to offset that. That shows up under my post processing tab as an entity. So I'll just take it and set it to maybe negative 0.3 in the X direction. And we'll try to use this as a source for our particle injection. So that's going to be done under Stream Tracer. I'll choose the inlet as that new cylinder we created. I'll set it to 50 stream tracers and 500 particles a second. I'm going to set it to be transient, and I want to pick an area where the flow is mostly steady state. So I'll go from 120 to 240 for my frames. And to be able to specify size of these particles, I'm going to switch to the DPM method. I'll give them an initial velocity in the negative y and also an acceleration to represent gravity. Set their density to be a little bit more than water and their diameter to be about a millimeter. Now, if I click the arrows, we'll run this particle injection on top of our existing results. Once that's done, we'll take a look And you can see the behavior as we inject these particles, how they'll get swept up into the flow. I can also then generate path lines. So if we generate path lines from frame 120 to 240, show them as lines, we'll be able to see exactly the path of those particles. And I'll hide some of my other plots just to make the visualization a little more clear. So these are just some of the ways you can use Xflow for a mixing tank type problem. Now, there were some concessions we made during this analysis, since it is a YouTube tutorial to make it solve quickly. That's mainly to do with the lattice resolve scale that we chose and the time step we chose. So if you want to take a study like this and refine it, two areas to look would be to reduce the resolved scale, either globally or at the interface wake, and also try reducing this time step. One of the parameters we want to monitor is a parameter called stability parameter. So oftentimes I'll open another function viewer and plot the stability parameter. The solver will throw a warning if this exceeds one, which it looks like we did at the beginning of our analysis. Generally, we want the stability parameter to be under 0.4. So you can see right towards the end of our solution where it was reaching the steady state condition, we were approaching that. But early on, our stability parameter was quite high, so we could benefit from reducing the time step slightly. But hopefully this video showed how, although Excel is very powerful, you can set up your analysis in potentially just a few minutes and get a good idea of your performance, and then go on to refine from there. We also outlined the various capabilities of Xflow when it comes to mixing tanks, including the much better free surface tracking, the ability to use the scalar transports and discrete particles, and the ability to represent arbitrary body motion, like vertical mixers or overlapping agitators. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us or let us know in the comments below. And also let us know what type of content you'd like to see next.